All right, once again, I'm away from the actual bridges and what I'm looking at doing is creating some walkways, at least on one side of the bridge for maintenance. Quite a large bridge, so we have to have access for work. And so what I have as the planking or the deck for that are these 1 16th by quarter inch pieces of basswood. And you haven't seen, but what I did was I took the razor saw just to create some grain, went up and down the planking here. And I also took a ruler, straight edge, and just put some lines so that uh, it's kind of not even wood. So we did that. So hopefully when I go to paint it, that'll show up a bit better. Maybe a little bit of dry brushing. Uh, but to hold these four pieces together, I also have this quarter inch by quarter inch pieces of basswood that I've cut the shape just to fit across all four pieces of planking on the top to hold them together. Now, I'm not sure at this point if I'm going to secure this to the bridge or not. I probably will, um, but I had to make sure I avoided the bracing on the bridge because I don't want this to sit up on top of it. And I'll show you what that means later on. But overall, I think a foot um, in O scale is enough for the width of the walkway. And that's what we have here. Also, to guard any people from falling over, I've got this, uh, it's actually Pennsylvania Railroad fencing that I had gotten from Shapeways. And so I'll probably put that alongside here on what would be the fourth plank on the edge. So that's what the plan is, just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this little project within a project up. I've gotta go do some painting of the fences and of the planking, and we'll be back with the next step. All right, continuing with the detail that's gonna go inside the bridge, what I did is created, the, I'm gonna call it a guard. I'm pretty sure that this has a technical name, but I'm not sure of it, but it's a barrier between the actual tracks and the walkway that will be inside of the truss bridge. And this is nothing more than a piece of basswood. It's a quarter inch by a quarter inch which ironically is the same height as the ties themselves. So that worked out pretty good. And all I did was stain it, did a little dry brushing and also added these sequin pins, which are just the right size to act as the rivets or nails that will secure the guard to the bottom side of the truss bridge and put some glue on the end of the ties and clamped it overnight and it's there, it's locked in place. So I did this on all the straight sections that are actually going through the bridge. All right, everyone, I just wanted to come back and give you a little progress report here. See what I've done with the walkways and the handrails. So we've got them all painted and some weathering going on, a little bit of rust at the feet of each of the stanchions. Of course, I went ahead and stained it as I stated in the last segment. I also did a bit of dry brushing just to give a little age here. Then I also added, as you can see, uh, some of the vineage on sections of the handrails. Pretty sporadic, but I did intentionally cover up some of the sections where there are gaps and uh, added a little bit of residue using uh, this moss deposits from, I believe it was AK Interactive, just for a little bit of character on the decking. 
So at this point, we're gonna start putting some of this stuff together and see if we can't get this bridge installed. All right, so here we are with the girder bridge in place. And this is not a new section of the layout. I worked on this section several years ago and I originally had that painted an old steel rusty color and it looked fine. But considering this is at the back end of the layout, I just want the eye to be drawn back there. Once I start adding more details uh, in this part of the layout, it's going to take um, things like this to pull the eye back there because, of course, you've got this obtrusion of a truss bridge in front of it. So um, we're going to do our best to make this work. But I'm happy uh, thus far of how this scene is turning out. All right, here we go. I'm back and I hope I'm not too shaky because I have the camera in my hand, but here's bridge pier number one in place. As you can see, I've got the bridge shoes all rusted up and there's bridge pier number two. And I ran some trains just to make sure I had the correct clearance that I needed and I do. And here's Pier number three embedded in the ground here with some ground foam and some bushes around it. And finally in the distance, here's pier number four. So these are not secured in place as I need to get the bridge in place and make sure it's aligned good. And I'll be back with that in just a moment. Okay, YouTube, here's an overview of the entire bridge. As I pan to the right, you may notice that all of the interior details, such as the walkway, has not been installed. I just like the lighting here. This is a close-up of the bridge where you can see the walkway, rivet detail, and weathering. You may notice that I did use those archer rivets on the diagonal members of the bridge. I originally had the bridge in place without them, but my mind would not let me settle with good enough. All three spans have this rivet detail on all four outside shoulders. You also get a peek inside the bridge. This is an aerial view of the structure looking down at the track and other details inside of it. Lastly, let's take a look at trackside level. Now let's watch a train traverse the structure a few times.
Overall, I'm very happy with how this project turned out. This was eight months thinking, trying, and executing a project that I initially didn't know how to realize. Thank you for those who have been following along on the build. I hope that the various steps helped you gauge all that goes into doing something like this. Anyways, that about does it for now. As always, this has been Dave, also known as Loving Them Trains, and until next time, later y'all.